I've eaten less schnitzel than the size of my hand, yeah. which, which feels wrong to I me. I think I only had a, a, just a mere couple of inches of sausage in the entire time I've been here. Kerry's rolling, so he's probably yeah. going to use this anyway, because yeah. he's edgy. He's edgy oh, like we could be cut to at any moment. All right, do you, wanna, do you want me to do a clap? Uh, actually, yes, I think okay. we do a clap. <clears throat> I'm going to clap in a minute. I'm going to clap now. Ready? Yeah. Here comes the clap. Yeah. Is that Was that loud enough? That was great. Okay. Well, another photokina done. Over. Yep. It's good though. It was. It was fun. And for once, not all of the products had been leaked beforehand. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm not sure many of them. I'm not sure it was leaked beforehand this year. I think we, we knew about a few things. So Photokina is obviously the biggest show in the photographic calendar once every two years. And this year we saw some really big announcements as usual. We had the uh, Fujifilm GFX 50S, we had the Sony Alpha 99 Mark II, we had the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II, Canon M5, and we had the, uh, what was the other one? GH5. GH5. <laughs> Panasonic. But it's a development tonight. Yeah, I don't know, basically just a mock-up of the show. But what was your uh, favorite camera? Well, given I think you're going to probably want to take a run at the Fuji, um, I think the Canon uh, M5 is in many ways not the most exciting camera, but the way it combines the autofocus technology and the user interface, mm. it, the moment you pick it up, it's just really usable. It's and very, I think very nice to use. I think that's going to be a really big deal. Um, and then actually, you know, for all I was slightly hesitant about it in my, in my write-up, the Panasonic LX10, or LX15, depending on where you live, um, I think that's got potential. I, I like one-inch sensor compacts. I like being able to carry a camera with me everywhere, but know that it's going to get good image quality. And I like dials and buttons and being able to quickly access things. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, touchscreen UI, you know, really, really usable. Um, those are the ones that I've been excited about. Notwithstanding, I think you know, I'll, I'll leave the big ones to you. Well, I think we all know. I think we all agree on the Fuji film. I mean, it, it's. They've been hinting for a long time that they're not going to bother with full frame and they'd probably, they were looking at a differentiating higher up. And and I think that so makes it's a lot not a huge surprise they've done it, but it, it's a beautiful camera. Yeah. And I think that makes a lot of sense. You know, you'd, um, the companies wrap themselves, in, you know, wrap themselves up in knots trying to support both APS-C and full frame. And you know, which do you concentrate on? How do you differentiate mm. between them? And you often end up making a little bit of a mess of one if you try to do both. So having that gap, having that separation makes a lot of sense. And speaking of supporting multiple formats now, of course, Sony has three. They have yep. E-mount, FE-mount, and it appears they're continuing to support A-mount with the new flagship, which I think, to be quite honest, came as a little bit of a surprise. A absolutely, but I mean, I, there will be an awful lot of happy alpha-mount owners. Uh, Certainly very happy deep preview readers. Yeah. Commenters. And it, it looks it looks like a very, very capable camera. It does. Um, it looks, yeah, it's nice. It's, it's all of the best bits of the, uh, the A7R Mark II and the best bits of the A99 sort of just, you know, meshed together. A, a trend of this show, for some reason, has been uh, talking to manufacturers about heat management. Um, just, you know, I, 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 You're the only one that's spotted the, this trend. <laughs> There's a risk that this is going to be the nerdiest thing I've ever said, and there, there is some competition for that. That's a very high bar, yeah. to be fair, but go on. That's, fa that's, that's true. The push towards 4K, and indeed some manufacturers already talking about 6K and 8K, um, and high resolution, and you know, the things like this, the Fujifilm with 50 megapixels, throwing lots of data around generates heat. Uh, and if you've got a small battery and you've got uh, maybe a lot of processing to do, worse still if you have those two things really close to one another, um, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been quite striking. You know, a topic I've never had to consider before has been raised by almost everyone I've spoken well, to. Canon week. mentioned it to me yesterday in relation to the 5D Mark IV. Yeah. And it came up again, uh, actually, when we looked at the Hasselblad's X1D. Uh, the cameras were hot, were actually warm to the touch because they've been turned on all day, being handled by people all day on the stand, and they're not warm from the lights, they're warm from just being on. Yeah, I was chatting to a Hasselblad this afternoon and they were saying that one of the advantages of using an all-metal body is you can essentially use the body of the camera as a heat sink. Yeah. And it's a conscious decision on their part. One of the ways that they deal with all the heat being put out by that sensor is to have it very tightly, tightly fitted to the aluminum body 
and use that, essentially use the entire yeah, camera right. as a heatsink. It's meant to be warm. That's certainly the angle they're yeah. giving. So I felt like the, the two products that I was most interested in the show were the uh, Fujifilm um, GFX 50S, obviously the one that I think was arguably the most interesting product probably of the show. Absolutely. Um, but also the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II, because I felt like they were two, they were two very different ends of the pole. So you had a very large sensor designed for landscape photographers and portrait photographers, designed for a slightly more serious studio-based use. And then you had the Olympus, which is a very small sensor, incredibly high speed, and 18 frames a second at full resolution with continuous autofocus. Yeah. So there are two quad-core processors in that camera. One of them is just designed to deal with autofocus. It's quite extraordinary. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, um, it also shoots at 60 frames a second in RAW at full resolution, which is insane. Mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, you know, Olympus is in a, in a position, there are now lots of rivals which have bigger sensors, but one of the great advantages of a small sensor is you can read it out really quick. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can offer these incredible burst rates um, and you know, DCI 4K video and all, all sorts of things. That's a great advantage that Olympus can exploit. So uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be really interesting I to think see. I mean, it sounds silly, but I think that, that could actually have potential to be an incredibly good video camera too. Yeah because it shoots 4K at, what, 236 um, megabits per second yeah. or something like that, incredible data throughput. And then you have this extraordinary 5-axis stabilization. Yeah. I mean, just in the, maybe we haven't really tried it out for real, you know, for real yet because we haven't got the final shipping sample, but just in the meeting room, tr trying to shake the camera, and the video footage hardly even wobbles. It's really quite amazing. Yeah, and that's a big deal. I mean, um, you know, as, you know, we can be guilty of it ourselves, getting hung up on you know, exactly what video features things have and haven't got. But stabilization and the ability to just use a camera handheld without having to worry about a steady cam, a gimbal, a tripod, that's liberating creatively. And, you know, even above and beyond the sort of the bit rate of the video, that's a big deal. But yeah, they've been, as well as cameras, there have been a load of lenses. Mm -hmm. um, what, what stood out for you? Well, I think um, Sigma, again, as usual. I mean, Photokinia is a very big show for Sigma. That's where they announced the Global Vision lineup a few years ago, uh, right here in Cologne. And, and they've really pulled out all the stops. The 12 to 24 millimeter this year looks, I mean, if it's as good as they say it is, it's extraordinary. Yeah, and the 85 millimeter as well. <laughs> yeah, the 85 millimeter I, I saw in the cabinet, and I thought that there must be a magnifying effect from the the glass at the front mm. of the cabinet. It's like because, a flower pot. It's enormous. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> they make a big deal with their art series of lenses about making no compromise, and you know, and the quality has has proven that to be the case. But they certainly haven't compromised on size. No, with this one. That's, that's one thing that um, the Yamaki San has been very clear about in recent years. Is he says to his designers make the best possible lens, don't worry about size, or wait, because the people that'll buy it will buy it for the quality. No, it's good, I think uh, uh, Tamara, uh, uh, you know, I think it's fair to say, somewhat inspired by the Global Vision, Sigma's Global Vision lineup and the new SP line, they got their first zoom in the SP line at the show as well, 150 to 600 millimeters. It's not a very fast lens, I think it's four to 6.3, uh -huh. but it's very, it's, it's, it's really very compact, it's very well machined, and it's very intelligent design. Lots of really amazing um, variation correction uh, customization options, and it works with their tap-in console. And that's a nice lens too. Well, actually, it's been amazing, even you know, even in the few years I've worked for TP Review, to see you know, the third-party lens manufacturers really pushing for a much higher position in the market. Mm. Um, you know, they're not just trying to offer value options. Well, everyone's they're... going high now. Yeah. Well, that's and across the board. That's where the only money that's left is. Mm. That's a cheery note to end on. Yeah, it is. Speaking of which, Kerry, I think this is your round, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, what was your, uh, Kerry, we should... What's, Kerry, what's your camera of the show? Let me take the camera. Sure. Okay, the staff. Oh, there we are. Well, I think, uh, hello. Hi. Hi. I think I'll, uh, I'll copycat Richard. I think the EOS M5 is my personal camera of the show. Uh, Canon, and then to pair Barney, Canon knows how to make a camera that is very pleasant to use. And this camera is going to be something that's going to be fun to carry with me wherever I go. It's going to have great color. Yeah, it's just going to be a really solid package. And that's what I'm really excited to get my hands on with the Canon s production All right, well, do you want to say goodbye on the, on the behalf of uh, the whole DP Review team? Sure, say so I'll, I'll do the sign off. Uh, for more about whatever it is we've talked about this evening and all things digital photography, 
head to deepreview.com. I'm Kerry. We've got Barney. We've got Richard from Hello. Hello, Germany. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Also, let's not, we're going to be horribly out of focus now. But let's not forget about the matter. Fujifilm because <laughs> lovely big sensor. We didn't hear it talked about it. Yeah, but <laughs> we did, we did. We lovely big about sensor, it. swivelly viewfinder. It's, it's, it's cool. We mentioned a little bit and okay, then. Right. I'm turning the camera off. Oh. Yeah, go on then. I'll hoof it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.